This is Evan Abrams for PremiumBeat.com, and today we're going to look at making circle bursts. So, many at the same time, but one at a time, and then also the circle. So everything you've seen in this intro, we'll get around to it. So let's, let's go do that. So the first thing you want to do in After Effects is create a new composition, and just make it the frame size and duration that you want. We're using HDTV 1080 24 frames a second. So when I make reference to going ahead certain numbers of frames, just remember we're at 24 frames a second. So if you want yours to be timed like mine, make sure it's 24 frames a second. Hit OK. Now, what we're going to be creating is two things. There are going to be first the radial burst outwards, and then there's going to be the sequential burst, which happens one thing at a time. To make the radial burst, it's quite simple. We're going to make a new shape layer using the rectangle. So let's just double click on rectangle and create one. Now this rectangle, in the rectangle path, we'd like its start to be at 100, uh, 0, which is flat and 100 wide. That's going to be its start. Let's zoom in here a little bit. And then I'm going to move ahead 10 frames. And its ending is going to be 0, 200. So it's going to end as a perfectly flat vertical line. And then its position, we're going to keyframe, and its first position is going to be 0, 0. So you can set a keyframe there. And then its ending position is going to be further up. So you want it to be going up, let's say, minus 300. So if we look at that motion, what this is doing is it's moving straight up and then it is getting thinner and disappearing. So now we're going to take these, we are going to easy ease them. We are going to pull the first handle in, so it has almost no influence, and we're going to drag the last handle out, so it has all the influence, which creates something that looks one frame at a time, like this. So that is pretty good. Now, the next thing we want to do with this is we're going to add a repeater to it. And that repeater makes reference to the center of this image. So we're going to set its copies to 8. We're going to change its transform to be, instead of position, it's going to transform the rotation by 360 degrees divided by 8, which is 45, meaning it will produce 8 copies going around in a circle. So, boink, that's what that looks like. You could do 4, which means 360 divided by 4, or 90 degrees, but this is pretty good. So, as you can see, the first frame is already like this, and the rest is like that. So this is a good way to create that radial burst. So, I'm going to just call this radial burst. Easy enough. Now, if we want to do it sequentially, I'm going to duplicate this, poke out the eye of that first one, and some things that we need to get rid of are first the repeater, because that's not part of this equation, um, but the rest of it is good. So we have one thing that is shooting off uh, one go. So what I'm going to do is just name this uh, burst spire, just so I know what it is, and I'm going to just change its color to like a dark green or something that's not this color. And I'm going to duplicate it. And in order to get it going around in a circle, I need this one to be at a different rotation value, so I hit R, and it needs to be different than the rotation value of this first one. But I want them to be linked, so it's way easier for me to create duplicates and make more of this. So I'm going to hold down Alt, click on the stopwatch, and then pick whip the rotation to the rotation. And basically this is saying, this comp dot layer, and then the name of a layer, and then make your transformation like its transformation. But what I want to do is make reference to the topmost layer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make reference to what is index equals 1, meaning whatever the top layer is. You don't have to use this index method. You could get by just fine by just linking to the name of this thing. It's perfectly fine. And then uh, the rest of this operation is OK. But Using the index value, I find, is better just because the top layer will always drive it. Or you can do however you'd like. But the next thing we're going to hit multiply this value by the index value of this layer. So that's going to be whatever this is times index value 2 because it is 1 below that. Now what that means is when I put this at 10, it means the next one is at 20. So what that looks like 
is both of them shooting off at the same time. So far, so good. Now I'm just going to offset this by one frame, and uh, that way we have one and then the other. Now I'm just going to duplicate this again, and as you can see, because this one is now index layer 3, it is 3 times 10 is 30. So that's good. Advance it a frame, duplicate, advance that a frame, duplicate, advance a frame, and I'm going to repeat until I'm up to index value, let's say 8. That would be fine. So what have we got? We've got a bunch of them shooting out in that way. So that's all well and good. And if I want to increase the rotation value between them, I can just amp up the rotation of Burst Spire 2, which is controlling all of these other layers. One thing to note, though, is that the first rotation value is going to be 45. If you would like this to be the vertical one, then you're going to have to make some changes, such as creating a new null object and making sure that null object is below those layers and then parenting those layers to it and then rotating this uh, minus 45 degrees. So see how that works. Or instead of going that route, just take all of these and then putting them into a pre-comp and then you can call this um, sequential burst, which is good, keeping in mind that since I've just irrevocably altered rotation of this thing here, that you need to go back in and make sure that this is actually at a value because all the other things reference that value. Or if you so desire, you can use um, you could use a layer with a slider control on it or something to dictate this rotation. But uh, this is a fairly easy way to get it done. Anyway, so what have we got? We've got one burst, poof, and then one uh, all the way around kind of thing. The only other thing that was in the intro that I've not showed you yet is to create those rings that pop out. Now, you can probably guess it's done in a similar way, that I'm going to create an ellipse. Wonderful ellipse there. It's going to have no fill. Okay, good. And it's going to have a stroke. Yes, not like having a stroke, stroke, but anyway, it's going to have a stroke on the line. And so the way it will be animated, let's poke the eyes out of these two, is we'll go into the ellipse, we'll go into the ellipse path, we'll go into the stroke here. The stroke width is going to start at 100, good for it. The ellipse path size is going to start at 0, 0. Keyframe both of those. Go ahead, however many frames you'd like. Uh, set the size to something like 500, 500 perhaps, or maybe even like 1,000, 1,000 you know, whatever your heart desires. And at this point, the stroke is down to zero. And then you'll take both of those, keyframe those, uh, easy ease them, and then uh, we'll just apply the same kind of squishing to its values and see how that goes. Wow, just like that. So then you can take these elements and just combine them in crazy, wacky ways. So, wow. That's nice. Maybe we start with this, duplicate that, make another one, duplicate this, duplicate these, and just, you know, go buck wild with all of that. And then you can create some kind of crazy masterpiece out there if you so desire, or, you know, whatever you want to do. And, uh, you know, feel free to just go nuts with all that. But that is how you can create circular bursts of things quite simply. Circles, lines, um, one of the things to note about this sequential burst is the technique we used for altering the rotation can be applied to anything. Imagine you create something that's a more complex animation, just put a bunch of them on top of each other, use that rotation expression, and you'll be able to quickly array them around in a circle. Anyway, this has been Evan Abrams for PremiumBeat.com. If you want to learn more about After Effects and other applications, stop by the blog for tips, tricks, and other tutorials, and hopefully this has been enjoyable for you. Uh, of course, stop by Premium Beat for all of your music and sound effects needs. There's awesome stuff there. Probably some wicked sound effects that go with these bursting things, like pew and whatever. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Follow the blog, and you'll see more of my stuff. And if you ever want to connect with me, just tweet at EC Abrams, and maybe I'll... Maybe I'll tweet back. Maybe. Okay, thanks for watching, and I'll see you around the internet.